Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. This is the third video in our SystemD series where we uncover its powerful features for managing Linux systems. Today we'll be exploring how to limit bandwidth and IOPS to optimize disk performance. Plus a bonus, I will show you a transient services and scopes in action. Practical tools to help you take control of resource utilization on the fly. If you are new here, my name is Philip, and I'm here to guide you through practical and efficient system management techniques. Ready to take your Linux skills to the next level? Let's get started. There are two key disk metrics, bandwidth and IOPS. Let's start with bandwidth. This is the theoretical maximum data transfer rate a storage device can handle. It's typically measured in megabytes per second. Mind that, what we'll be measuring is throughput. That's the actual data transfer rate achieved during real-world operations. Bandwidth is the theoretical peak performance of the storage device. People often talk about bandwidth, but what they actually mean is throughput. Anyway, you know the difference now. The throughput is usually measured during sequential reads or writes. This is especially important for spinning plate drives. Solid state drives can access any data location with roughly the same speed. For HDDs, moving the head to a different location takes time. So, to get the maximum throughput, you should measure sequential reads or writes. This bandwidth matters in scenarios like, for example, copying large files, streaming data, or backups and restores. These activities rely on large contiguous data streams. The more bandwidth your disk has, the better it will handle such tasks. Let's start by measuring our disk maximum throughput. To do that, we'll use the FIO, one of the most popular disk benchmarks. Let's create a script so we can easily rerun it. Here are the parameters that we'll use. IO engine libio to enable asynchronous input-output operations. Then let's set the IO depth to 64. That's the amount of IO requests that can be in flight at once. Next, let's define the file to be used for tests, as well as the amount of data that will be read during the test. Upon first run, FIO will create a file and reuse it for subsequent runs. Next, let's set the direct flag to 1 to bypass the operating system's cache. Then let's specify the block size to 1 MB. Block size determines how much data is read or written in a single I.O. operation. Larger blocks reduce the number of I.O. operations required to transfer the same amount of data. Let's set the type of test as sequential read and finally name the test as read bandwidth. I will save the script, then grant it execute permission and run it. FIO is creating the 10 GB file that will be used for testing. Now the test is in progress. Okay, we got the test results. Let's scroll up. Here's the line we are interested in. The maximum read throughput is 1643 MB, that's 1723 megabytes per second. That means our NVMe drive can read 723 megabytes per second during sequential reads. Let's create a systemd service that will measure disk bandwidth. To do that, I will run systemctl edit followed by force parameter to create a unit if it does not exist, and then the full parameter to create a file not a drop-in. We'll start with a unit section where we set the description to disk bandwidth. Then we'll create a service section. That's where the configuration goes. Next, we'll point the exec start parameter to our benchmark script. Exec start specifies the command that the system executes to start the service. Now let's save the unit definition and reload system configuration. Finally, let's run our service to measure maximum disk throughput. Okay, now I will open logs for our service. Let me jump to the end of the log with Shift G and then scroll up to find the line with the result. Okay, our service works. There's a parameter called IO read bandwidth max that allows you to limit the maximum read bandwidth that the service can consume from the underlying storage devices. First, we need to identify the device our test file resides on. Okay, it's NVMe 0 and 1. Let's copy that string. Now I will open our bandwidth service definition and add two parameters. We'll set the IO accounting to true. That will show us live statistics for the service. We'll also set the IO read bandwidth max uh, to set the cap on the bandwidth. First, let's put the device name that we want to limit. That's NVMe 0 and 1 and set the 100 MB per second limit. 
Now let's save the unit definition and reload system configuration. Finally, I will start the service. To monitor service execution, I will run systemctl status combined with watch that will execute that systemctl command every one second. Because we've set the IO accounting to yes, we can see how much data did our service read and write to disk. Mind that IO accounting is not enabled by default. By looking at those stats, can you guess how much data is being read every second? Let's speed up the video. Here at the bottom, there's the summary. As you might have guessed, the throughput is exactly 100 megabytes per second. If you look at the disk utilization, it's only 10%. If you have a server running multiple services, then by using IO read bandwidth max parameter, you can ensure that a single service don't monopolize the available disk IO bandwidth. Mind that there's an identical parameter called IO write bandwidth max that controls write speeds. Let's talk about second important metric called IOPS that stands for Input Output Operation Per Second. It measures the number of read-write operations the storage can perform per second. It reflects the storage's ability to handle small random read-write operations such as database transactions. So in general, the higher the IOPS, the faster and more responsive the application is. Of course, assuming the application relies on storage and performs many small random read-write operations, like for example, virtual machine hypervisor or a database. Nowadays, we see some crazy amount of IOPS due to apps running on solid state drives, but if you look at HDD drives, the IOPS are much lower. Let's create a service that measures disk IOPS. I will copy our script that measures bandwidth to a new script that will measure IOPS. Now let's open the script. I will change a few parameters. First, let's use a different file for our test so it does not conflict with the bandwidth test. Then I will change the file size to 1 GB to speed up the test, but you should use at least 10 GB file to get reliable results. Then I will change the block size to 4K. We want to measure the number of input output operations and not the amount of data. So the smaller amount of data we read in a single operation, the better, as we can fit more operations within the same time frame. Now, let's change the test from sequential read to random read. This will simulate the application that retrieves many small pieces of data from various locations. Finally, let's name the test read IOPS. Okay, let's save the script and run it. If we look at our results, we'll see the maximum throughput is much lower. That's to be expected, as we are using a small block size. However, if we look at the number of read operations per second, we see it's around 148,000. As you suspect, there's an IO read IOPS max parameter that limits the amount of disk read operations per second, as well as IO write IOPS max parameter that limits the amount of disk write operations per second. Initially, to demonstrate those parameters in action, I was planning to create a parent slice where I cap the read IOPS and a child service running our benchmark that is limited by the parent slice. A similar thing we did for CPU. However, this time I'd like to show you something different. Instead of creating a dedicated system service, we'll create a so-called transient unit. It does not require creating any configuration files. You can run everything from the command line. This is ideal for one-off jobs where creating a unit file would be overkill. At the same time, you still benefit from systemd's powerful control features, allowing you to limit CPU, memory, I.O. and network usage. Let's give it a try. To run a program in transient mode, we'll use the systemd run command. Instead of creating a service, we'll create a scope. That will cause the process to run in the foreground. Next, we'll add a property with dash p. I'll add io read iops max and set it to 1000. You can provide multiple properties just by adding another dash p. Let's limit the memory, CPU, and also enable IO accounting to track IO usage. At the end, we provide a command or script to execute. Okay, let's run our transient scope. Look at the IOPS. It's exactly 1000. Our limits work. Let's now copy the unit name. I will run systemctl status and paste the unit name. 
Do you see that? This unit is controlled by system D. It's a transient unit. We see the accounting statistic, like the amount of data read from disk or amount of memory it consumes. Okay, the process has finished. The IOPS result is exactly 1000. Now let's rerun the systemctl status command. The unit is no longer there. As it was transient, it got cleaned up. Executing systemd run without dash dash scope parameter will create a transient service. Let's do that. As you can see, the process was sent to the background. Let's copy the service name and check it with systemctl status command. The output is being stored in our systemd journal. After the transient service ends, it's cleaned from the system. To sum up, if you have a reoccurring task or service that needs to start at boot or run on a schedule, or if you require detailed lifecycle management features like automatic restarts, dependency handling, or integration with other services, you should use regular services where you create a service unit file. For one-off or short-lived processes, you should use transient units. When to use transient services and when to use transient scopes. Scopes run in the foreground and services run in the background. All right, folks, that's all for today. Hope you learned something new about systemd and your disk performance. I encourage you to try limiting bandwidth consumption and IOPS for your specific workloads. Also, try running some transient services and scopes to see how they can help you control resource utilization. Next time, we'll use systemd for network accounting and control. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.